Hi there, and welcome to our Talking Positive online series, where we will be learning about HIV. We are the Youth Educating Peers, or YEP Crew, from Western Australia. I'm Kai. I'm Emilio. And I'm Habiba. More than 35 years have passed since the first cases of HIV in the early 1980s. Although it was not always the case, today HIV is a completely manageable condition. However, this doesn't mean that we can stop talking about HIV, as it still affects the lives of millions of people around the world, including in Australia. These videos will provide an overview of HIV, information about prevention and treatment, and discussion about the stigma that still surrounds HIV. Let's get started by covering the fundamental facts about HIV and AIDS. So, what is HIV? Let's spell it out. H-I-V. It stands for Human Immunodeficiency Virus. A virus is a microorganism that cannot grow or multiply outside of the living cells of a host. Viruses are smaller than bacteria and cause many common human infections and are also the cause of a number of rare diseases. A lot of viruses are host specific and in this case it's clear that this virus is specific to humans, therefore it doesn't affect other animals. Immunodeficiency is a pretty big word, so let's break it down further. Immuno and deficiency. Immuno refers to the immune system. Deficiency means a lack, shortage or insufficiency. So there you have it, a virus that infects humans and causes their immune system to weaken. Your immune system is your body's way of resisting and fighting off infections and toxins. Specifically, HIV infects a type of white blood cell called a CD4 cell. They're also sometimes called T cells or helper cells. One of their main roles is to detect infections, foreign particles, and send signals to other types of immune cells to come and destroy it. And that's how people fight off infections that can make them sick. When HIV gets inside the CD4 cell of a host, it uses it as a virus making factory and makes more copies of itself. The copies then leave the cell and destroy other CD4 cells as they continue to multiply inside the body. As more CD4 cells are destroyed, the body becomes more and more vulnerable to harmful infections that it normally would have been able to fight off. So this brings us to AIDS. AIDS stands for Acquired Immunodeficiency Syndrome. So we've just talked about what immunodeficiency is. The immunodeficiency that can result from HIV is acquired, meaning it is caused by an infection. It's not something that you genetically inherit from your parents when you're born. A syndrome is the signs and symptoms that occur together that, in combination, point to a particular condition. When a person has been infected with HIV, their immune system becomes weaker and weaker over time. The body cannot fight off infections because they don't have enough CD4 cells. A person who is HIV positive is diagnosed with AIDS when either of two things happen. Their CD4 cell count hits less than 200 cells per microliter or they develop two or more opportunistic infections simultaneously. Some illnesses are called opportunistic, meaning they take advantage of the opportunity presented by a damaged immune system. When the immune system is working properly, they would usually present no threat. There are over 40 illnesses that have been classified as opportunistic illnesses. When left untreated, HIV can develop into AIDS in 10 years or longer on average, though it may take less time for some people. In order for HIV to be transmitted, there are a number of conditions that must be met. We can explore these conditions with this formula. HIV present in body fluid, plus direct access to bloodstream, plus opportunity for transmission. Firstly, it's necessary for HIV to be present in body fluid. There are lots of different kinds of body fluids, but only certain fluids can have a high enough concentration of HIV in them to actually infect someone else. Let's brainstorm as many different kinds of body fluids as we can, and then we'll pick out the ones that are capable of transmitting HIV. Feel free to pause here for time to brainstorm for yourself.
So these are the bodily fluids that are able to transmit HIV. However, it's important to know that for transmission to occur, HIV must actually be present. If it's not present, there's no risk. Next, we have direct access to bloodstream. The virus actually needs a way to not only get into the body, but also into the bloodstream. So where might HIV be able to enter the body? Damaged tissue. For example, a cut, scratch, wound, burn, sore, blister, or ulcer. Mucous membranes, such as the eyes, are up the nose. Or it's directly injected. Last of all, there must be an opportunity for transmission. In order for HIV to be transmitted, there must be some form of contact that allows it to move from one person to another. What kind of circumstances can you think of where HIV can be transmitted? Pause the video and think about behaviours or situations where the bodily fluids we've discussed might come in contact with another person. So, how'd you go? These are the ones that we came up with. Unprotected sex, in particular vaginal or anal sex, contact sports like boxing or football, sharing needles and other injecting equipment, tattoos and piercings, childbirth, breastfeeding, blood transfusions, organ transplant, blood rituals, violence and fighting, or attending to serious injuries. These are some situations where HIV transmission is possible. However, there are numerous precautions that are taken here in Australia to prevent transmission. For example, there are strict standards for tattoo and piercing equipment, the blood rule in contact sports, thorough screening of blood and organ donations, and consistent use of gloves and protective equipment for doctors and health professionals. Knowing everything that we know now, it's safe to say that you cannot get HIV from insect bites, toilet seats, kissing, sharing cutlery or other utensils, or hugging or touching. When one party is HIV positive, it is however possible to acquire HIV by having sex without a condom, sharing injecting equipment, and where a mother is HIV positive, breastfeeding.